Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Adam with Prepare for Air. Um, today we're going to be looking at residential ductwork, and I have a couple of notes that I'm actually going to stick up here on the screen so you guys can kind of follow along while I talk to you about it. Um, but the first thing is, if you're able to run a load calc for ductwork before you design it, that's the best case scenario, obviously. Um, I know a lot of you guys don't necessarily know how to run a load calc, so instead we're going to be using kind of just um, the basics of the ductwork design. So the first thing uh, we're going to use as kind of our rule of thumb is going to be 600 square feet per one ton of air. Okay, so if you have 600 square feet you're looking to condition, you need about one ton of air in order to satisfy the thermostat for that 600 square feet. Um, and then with one ton of air, um, so now kind of transitioning into the ductwork, with one ton of air you need 400 CFM worth of space, which is cubic feet per minute worth of space in order to fit all of that airflow into the duct itself. Um, you don't want it to be drastically oversized because if it is, then the air isn't going to move as efficiently through the duct work because it moves based on static pressure. So it pressurizes the duct first and then moves forward. Okay, so you need to be able to keep enough pressure so that way you're able to get the airflow from the system all the way to the actual supply duct itself. Um, so one ton of air, 400 CFM. So we'll kind of keep that in mind. Um, the next thing I'm going to stick up here is a drawing that I did of a system. Okay, so real basic, you got the furnace down here on the bottom, you got the AC coil up here on the top, and then the supply plenum up here. All right, and then there's two different, so this example is going to be a three ton system. Okay, so with a three ton, just multiply it by that 400 CFM. So with a three ton, you need 1200 cubic feet per minute worth of space. All right, so this example, we need 1200. So that's why that supply plenum up top has 1200 right there. So it fits the full amount of air we need. All right, and then it's going to break up into two separate directions on this. Okay, so in order to figure out what size duct work we need, whether it's flex duct or rectangular duct, you'll have to use a duct uh, chart. So I'm going to go ahead and include that in the description below. Um, so you guys can kind of have that as a reference. Um, I'm also going to post it on my LinkedIn and Instagram as well. So if you guys want to go ahead and pull it from there, um, it'll be really easy to find. Um, but essentially it's going to be a chart and I'll stick a picture up here real quick. Give you a second to kind of look through it. Um, and while we look at this example, we got on the left hand side, a 12 by 8 rectangular duct. So if you just follow that duct chart down to where it says 12 inch by 8 inch, you'll see that there's a 500 CFM capacity for that size. Um, and then on the other side of it, right, we got a 16 inch by an 8 inch. Okay, and that's going to process, again, follow the duct chart, it's going to process or it can handle 700 CFM worth of air. All right, so we got the 700 and the 500, that gives us our 1200 total that we need. Um, so the next thing we're going to look at, all right, so we got that. So the 500 that comes off to the left, um, that's going to be our focus here first. So now we have the trunk line, all right, we have 500 CFM worth of air going over the household and we need to distribute that to the different rooms in the house, okay? And now we're going to look at the uh, same thing, go ahead and look at that flex duct chart. All right, you got a 10 inch, 6 inch, 4 inch, 8 inch, all those different ones. Um, and it corresponds with the amount of air or CFM that those can handle. Okay, so I have a breakdown just below the system here. All right, that says 1 10 inch and 1 6 inch. All right, so if you just follow that duct chart, you got the 10 inch, which processes 400 cubic feet per minute, the 6 inch, which processes 100 which gives you your total 500, right? So there's a few different breakdowns there of how you could actually lay out the duct work and how, um, you know, the different options you have in terms of how many runs can come off of that 500 trunk line. Um, but then, you know, how do we decide, right? So down below it, I put the best choice. So in order to kind of come up with the best choice for which breakdown you want to use for your duct work, it's going to depend mainly on a few things, right? So you got the layout, okay? So the basement layout, if there's a lot of hard corners, you know, um, or just sharp edges or a lot of different rooms in the basement, you can't just stick a 10 inch in the middle because those other closed off rooms are not going to get any airflow. Um, so the layout is really going to matter. Accessibility is going to be another one that's going to really matter. 
Um, obviously, you have to be able to reach that flex, flex duct all the way to where it needs to go, to, to that room. Um, and a lot of times accessibility is tough. You, you, know, you can't get it all the way to where ideally it should go. Um, so you kind of have to make it work. But accessibility is the second one. Um, windows is another big one. So windows, right? The whole idea behind duct design is to set up a nice cross pull that pulls the air from the supply to the return across the room. Okay, so, and then the reason I brought up the windows is you want to always try and put supplies near heat infiltration areas. So if we put a supply right here above the window, it's gonna input air and block out the heat as it's coming in through the window. Okay, so windows layout, um, you know, trying to set up that cross pull for, uh, for the airflow and then accessibility, those are gonna be the main determining factors when laying out your ductwork.